Hey traders, I bet the majority of you are missing out on a high probability trading opportunity that's sitting right in front of you. And, and that has been profiting the autopilot traders for quite some time because we trade it just, you know, we either have a trade or have an order out on it almost every week and certainly have done so for the past 11 years. And I'm talking about basically afterburner kind of supercharged returns that you can get from TQQ, the three-time leverage ETF, or the NASDAQ. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So what is it? TQQ, today I'm going to basically go a little bit deeper dive into that. This is going to be a series of videos I'm going to be talking about where I'm talking about the maximizing your profits with high probability leverage ETF swing trades. And so I'm Dennis Wilborn, the autopilot trader, and I specialize in trading the leverage ETF. So let's go ahead and jump into today's session right now. So traders, as we said, we're going to be talking about the uh, TQQ and swing trading the TQQ. And uh, so TQQ is a very popular, uh, uh, swing trading is a very popular strategy when combined with the leverage ETF, such as TQQ, it can be a very powerful, powerful uh strategy and system for making extraordinary gains. You know, TQQ is a fantastic stock to use for swing trading. And it's a leveraged ETF and tracks the performance of, as we said earlier, the NASDAQ 100 index, which includes some of the biggest and best known stocks, such as Apple, Amazon, Google. And that's where we're going to be basically talking. I'm going to show you what, I'm going to do a little bit of comparison today between the Qs which is its non-leveraged counterpart, and TQQ. What are some of the things we need to be watching for? Well, one, why trade it? The great potential of return. I'm going to be showing you a couple of charts here uh, momentarily. You're going to, it's going to blow your mind. You're just going to go, whoa, that is just amazing. Yes, I want to get in on that. Next is we have to be aware of the risk and reward. While it is quite high, the trading the leveraged ETF can be a two-edged sword. It is critical to trade a plan with rules that will get you out rather than get you into trouble. And so stop losses and profit targets are very important to what we'll be doing. Uh, one of the things that I like to utilize with this is, of course, our PEP, our precision entry point uh, strategy and routine. Uh, I'll put a link to that down in the uh, description, show you how to get that Great training uh, for to take a look at, but I'll show you exactly how to plan your trades to get in and trade the TQQ. Uh, we'll do a real quick comparison between the NASDAQ with the Qs representing the NASDAQ and what makes them different. And then I'll get into a couple of simple hacks you need to be aware of by looking at the charts. And so uh, to sum it up, by using high probability swing trading strategies like the moving averages or the momentum or PEP, Precision entry point routine, you can maximize your profits with TQQ. So I want to say thank you for watching this video. And don't forget, subscribe to our channel. And for more tips, basically hit the, hit the uh, bell. And uh, it will basically let you know when I post new trading tips in the very near future. So leverage return, that's one of the things that makes... TQQ is so powerful. So how does it compare out to the NASDAQ? As you see, the uh, NASDAQ over here has provided since 2010, and that's 2010 is when TQQ became available. It did not have a few years, so it does not include that with this year. But as you can see, the NASDAQ on its own provided a pretty good darn, you know, pretty darn good yearly return over the past 11 years, almost 10, you know, 11 years. Well, throw on top of this and look what TQQ did. Now, you may be asking me, well, Dennis, wait a second. I thought it was a three-time leverage ETF. And what is a three-time leverage ETF? Well, what, it's, what it basically attempts to do is match three times the daily return of the NASDAQ. Therein lies both its strength and its weakness in that if it's on a losing track, let's say into going into a bear market, those losses will hammer you down more and more and more. And you can literally go and, and lose all the funds you have trading. On the 
Outside of that, <clears throat> if you are trading in a bull market, as you can see, the return for 2012 was 89%. Well, the return on the Qs was only 16.3. That 89% is well over the 3% or three times the leveraged amount that you get on a daily chart. Why is that? It's because of compounding, compounding throughout the year, especially when you're in a nice bull market. As you can see, looking down here to 2020 and 2019, the, the big uptrend, those years, over 100% in this. What I found in trading TQQ, if I'm swing trading it, I can actually beat these numbers. Now, it's not a guarantee that we're going to beat these numbers every year, but I can beat these numbers by getting in, staying in for a 10, 15, 20% run, pulling my money back out in cash, waiting for the next setup. I've found that TQQ and the Qs set up about somewhere between two to four or five times per year. So what does that look like on a regular chart? It looks like that. Pretty interesting. So as you can see, TQQ, great return. One of the things they also say, be careful about, they say that TQQ is not a long-term investment strategy or a long-term investment vehicle. I question that as a, a, you know, as conventional wisdom because the unconventional wisdom looks at the return now that we've been going for almost 11 years. This is an excellent return regularly through the year. Again, it gets back. You've got to have a plan. You have to have a strategy to trade this. And of course, I suggest take a look at the autopilot trading strategy, uh, which has done exceptionally well utilizing TQQ as one of its trading vehicles. What about the compounding? Well, the compounding rate even is, makes it if one had taken $1,000 invested it in TQQ and Q, the Qs, by the end of the, this 12-year period, the Qs would have been worth $9,200 and some change. Well, look at this on the Q, TQQQ. Again, this would leave it in, letting it compound. That $1,000 invested in 2011 would have been worth $189,000 right now. That is a gain of over 18,000%. Now, again, is this what I'm saying? Is I'm saying that, you know, that, yeah, we're going to do this every year. No, I'm not saying that whatsoever. What I am saying is, though, if we're not aware that there are things that re make returns like this, we'll always be stuck with the conventional wisdom of being satisfied with 8%. And speaking for myself, I am not going to be satisfied with 8%. So if you agree with me, hey, leave a comment down in the, in the comments saying, I agree with you, Dennis. You're right on, buddy. What now? Let's take a look at always compare when you're looking at any type of ETF. And I primarily focus on three index ETFs, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell. And I also focus on just four leverage sector ETFs. I so focus on the financials, biotech, the uh, technology, and oil exploration. Those are the only four I take a look at, and, and they mo all move more than enough to give us these great returns on a, on a regular basis. And so what we want to do is, one, the Q's charts provide a more accurate picture of price action. What do I mean by that? The Q's Basically, since they are not leveraged and they're not utilizing futures and not using other types of you know, mechanisms to get their three-time return, they follow the same path as the NASDAQ pretty darn closely. So as far as pure technical uh, signals, I get it off of the charts for the Qs. So sometimes the Q charts can actually be utilized to trigger trades in TQQ. It's a very simple process. We put in our conditional orders based on price action movement of the Qs, but have it by the, the uh, uh, shares of, the, of TQQQ. And then finally, we want to recognize that using technical levels in TQQ for placing stop orders may result in a larger stop loss than uh, allowing 
but you know then allowed for by my trading rules like i know i personally have a catastrophic loss a stop loss of five percent if i get into a trade on tqq and my swing low is let's say 11 percent away i need to take appropriate action to make sure that i'm never risking more than what i would lose on a full size regular five percent so that means i reduce the number of shares that i buy of tqq and then I, as I said there, adjust this, uh, the size accordingly. So let's take a look at some charts and see what the heck uh, we can see about the differences in TQQ and the Qs. Okay, here's a chart of the Qs. And as you can see, then uh, this is a current chart as of close of business today. And as you can see, price actions have pushed up into this uh, overhanging level of resistance that was identified by this swing low high over here on the 20 uh, the 16th of uh, August 2022 along the way we pushed up and through the 200 day moving average and up and through the 50 day moving average and I want to say take a look at this and say well what was the Q TQQ doing while QQQ was giving us a nice let's say a nice buy figure buy signal here the TSI, TSI turned up, gapped up above the moving averages. And if that's your trigger to get in, gapping up about the, above the eight-day moving average, that would be a great place to have entered or the next day. And then we've gone on to a nice little run. How much have we, how much value have we gone in? If we would have got in at close to the low right there or at the 200, the uh, eight-day moving average, we currently, the high today would have taken us up 10.62%. So as you can see over the last few weeks, this has been in a nice uptrend. What happens to TQQ for the same period of time? Well, first, let's take a hard look at what happened here. Well, one, price actions went the same way, popped up, but as you can notice, see that TQQ was only sitting on top of the 50-day moving average, just barely breaking above it. So the signal that I received on QQQ was a stronger buy signal than it was on uh, TQQ. So I could have placed an order to buy on QQQ on a retracement to the eight-day moving average or the and then have it buy shares of TQQ. And let's say it would have filled right here. Where and how far have we run since we filled right there? If we filled right there. Well, again, go up here. And that comes up to a little bit over 30%. So in the short term of a couple of weeks, as you can see, it is really close to a three to one ratio. Uh, because on the Qs, we were up 10%. So that's one deal. The other thing I will do a comparison on, well, what about this past high? Well, as you can see, that past high is here, August 16th. And from its current position, it would basically be a run of about 2.59%. 2.59%. What about the TQQ? to fill up the same amount of time to where, so here's the high from the 16th of August. Here's the move that it would need to make. How much is it? So it was about two and a half percent. Look at that. On the on this means it would have to gain 36% to get back to those recent highs. Hence, using the past high here on TQQ, it's, it's not equivalent to be using the past high, uh, or uh, equivalent to comparing it to the past high on the Qs. Now, with that said, let's go back and take another look at other, uh, other pictures to give you some of the, the differences. And the next thing I want to compare it to is what about this move from this past, from hitting off the... Uh, this uptrending line right here and if we got in here and it would end up over the short period of time ran up about 19 percent now this is on the queue so 19 percent 
Now, a straight three to one, our, our, our three times leverage means that we would be up, what, three times 19 uh, comes out to about 57%. On the PQQ, how far did we run up? Same, same place, you can see, 64.86%. Okay. One of the reasons why uh, that basically turns out to be more is look at the formation of this uptrend. It is steep, very few pullbacks. In our formation that we checked over here, where it was right about equal uh, to uh, uh, three times the move from here to here on the on the Qs, well, look what happened. This is a little bit more flatter, and we had a lot more zigzag in there. So it basically, some of the down days wound up canceling out the the uh, uh, the up days. So there's one of the big items is that basically you have to be aware of the price action going on on both charts. Let's flip over here to a weekly chart. And here we get a little bit, some additional information that, that kind of blows me away. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna back here and I'm gonna track this move from, this was the COVID bear market from this low up to this high. But first, I'm going to do it on the Q. Same time period. And we have to admit, this is a one heck of a really nice run. And it comes out to approximately 84%. 84%. And that was over a, a, a period of 161 days and 24 weeks. What about TQQ? TQQ, same period of time. We were 84, and this was up. 444%. Have I got your attention? I certainly hope I have. Uh, th this kind of, this is the motion and movement that things like the Qs do. What about the full run until it rolled over here in uh, 2020? That was up over a thousand percent, a thousand percent on the TQQQ. How much was the Q's up during that same on that same run. They were up very nicely, but it was up a thousand percent. This was up only 147%. So as you can see, 147 times three is definitely less than the 1000 percent that it is up. So again, having a plan, sticking with the plan, and recognizing that if we are in a strong bear market, or bull market, excuse me that TQQ can really, really pump a lot of, of not volatility, but of just potential profits into your portfolio. So it's something you should really take a look at because it, like I said, it's amazing. No. <laughs> so, okay. There's a disclaimer in. That's me and uh, that's our motto for Autopilot Trading. So remember, hey, check us out over to Autopilot Trading Service. And we've beaten the uh, S&P, you, know, uh, you know, 11 years straight with an average return of 37%. Uh, so while this is not a guarantee that you're going to achieve these kind of returns, all the, you know, you do have the opportunity. You know where the gold nuggets are. Now it's a matter of figuring out how to trade them. And again, we provide excellent opportunities we're doing that through the autopilot trading service. So aloha, God bless. Let me know if you like this trading tip and if trading TQQ is something that could be in your futures. Aloha, God bless everybody.